So guys, I am back at Heathrow to take you behind the scenes once more. And as you can see, thousands of bags get checked in every day here at Terminal 5. And I've always asked myself, what does happen to my bag after it goes behind the counter? So I'm here today to find out, to see what happens after I go to the lounge, I chill, I go on board and I pick up my bag at the destination. But I heard there is a lot of work involved to get your bag on the right flight. So today I'm here to find out. I'm sure it's going to be an exciting day. So let's do this. All right, so right now I'm here at Terminal 5 with Nigel. You want to quickly introduce yourself? Hi there, uh, I'm Nigel, I uh, work at Terminal 5. I'm one of the baggage coordinators at Terminal 5 at Heathrow Airport. Uh, I'm going to go on a little tour of the uh, baggage system today just to see where your bag goes and, and, and what happens um, in that brief period. So yeah, I was told he's the man, so I'm sure it's going to be quite an exciting journey. So let's do it. Definitely. See you soon. So Nigel, where are we right now? So what's happening here? So we're directly underneath check-in right now. Uh, what we're seeing now is those bags where you've left your bag tagged upstairs, coming down, feeding into the system. And then every bag has to go through screening. So they'll make their way along these belts, conveyors, uh, to an x-ray machine. You may be able to go downstairs and look at it a little bit better in a second. But any bag that's standing up on its side and it's too high, will rotate round and it'll go through what we call a tumbler and it will spin round and drop it down on its side and enable it to go back on its journey. So literally all the bags which are checked in upstairs, they are going through the first stage here and then like literally whether it's international or domestic flight, we have that one is going to San Francisco. Let's see where the next one is heading to. NRT, so this one is going to Narita. And the next one is off to A, B, Z, Z. I don't know, that might be, is that Aberdeen? Aberdeen, Aberdeen. Aberdeen. there you go. <laughs> so I believe we can accept bags up to 45 minutes before departure. Okay. In Terminal 5, and that bag has good time to get downstairs, screened and loaded onto the aircraft. So like 45 minutes. 45 minutes is the, the last uh, time before departure. So at two o'clock departure, we can accept a bag at 1.15. All right. And that should have plenty of time to get screened and get onto that aircraft. What's happening here right so now? So these bags are going to our early bag stores. So some of them are coming from the departure area. Oh. Some of them are coming from the transfer area. Yeah. So they're going on to a single line, two lines. It also helps when we have problems in the system where we need to reroute bags. We have a lot of these in the system which is the resilience. Oh. So we can make sure the bags are not late. This is one of the out gauge output areas. So as the bags come in through the system on screen, they drop down the lift. British Airways to collect those bags and deliver them to the right lateral for the right flight. So and this is the, the end of the journey of the bag. Then this it gets loaded, loaded into the container, the container is then driven out to the aircraft 40 yeah. minutes before departure. All right. Loaded onto the aircraft. Okay. So this is now connecting T5 and... So this connects T5 to T5A, uh, T5B, T5C, Terminal 3 and the WIB. So if I fly in from Munich, land at Terminal 3 and connect to Beijing to Terminal 5, my bag travels all the way underground to Terminal 5. What is the speed? Is that because those cars are so these pretty cars, quick? Yeah, uh, 30 kilometers an hour is, is the rough average speed of those on a, on a straight through this tunnel and then it will slow down as it goes through busier areas. Okay. 
It's incredible. Wow. We've got about eight kilometers of track yeah. in the DCV system between Terminal 5 over to Terminal 3. So, and you said your bag is technically not allowed to travel without you, right? So your bag can't travel without you. Um, there are occasions where with weather disruption that you might travel and your bag doesn't quite make it. Those bags can then travel without you, but it's a different level of screening uh, and a certain documentation that needs to be filled out by the airlines. DFT quite, quite interesting. So, yeah. Yeah. so yeah, nice. you said there is a problem with all the frequent flyer when they leave their stickers on the back. So one of the problems we, we do see in an automated system is multi v tags. So if you are a frequent flyer, please take those stubs on the side of your bag off because it can get confused with that flight and the flight that you're on for today. So that will come into this area, the problem bag area. So if you're ever traveling and you see that all your little stickers have been peeled off, or there's a sticker over the top of it, a white sticker, it's because the bag's got confused in the system as to where it's traveling to, and these guys will mitigate that and then put it back in the system. Exactly, guys. If you want to make his life easier, peel off your, your tags. Only keep the tag for your flight on the day on your bag. It'll be a great help for us at Ethan. So where are we going now, Nigel? So right now, we're gonna go out to T5B. I'm gonna look at a head of stand output where bags can be delivered up until minus 10 before departure. So bags have the best chance of getting loaded. Uh, again, it's every passenger, every bag, every time at Heathrow, if, if the best of our ability. So we're gonna see the bag tip off, and hopefully go up a conveyor belt, and then see where it comes out at the aircraft side, right next to the aeroplane. Seven stretch that one. It's got five doors. Beautiful Dreamliner and Life Flight at the moment. But if we can get one, so you see how close the output point for the bags to the aircraft. Very quick. Very quick. So this flight would come around our DCV system from the T5A, come onto this tipping point here, back and tip onto the conveyor belt, and then go around up to the stand, and like I say, up until minus 10 before departure. If you want a really tight connection in T5B, uh, we can connect bags within 25 minutes from one aircraft. So I have a question and I guess all of us want to know and it has happened to probably a lot of travelers when your bag gets lost what are the reasons for your bag to go missing so one of, one of the, the, the biggest reasons your bag gets lost coming into Heathrow is not actually Heathrow itself it gets misconnected at the station beforehand yeah so if you have a connection through the States into somewhere like New York if it's missed in New York then it will be missed out of Heathrow Okay. And that's one of our biggest problems is we, we do see a lot of bags misconnect into Heathrow and so they misconnect out of Heathrow. Alright. And there's nothing, as a traveller, there's nothing you can do about it? For, from our point of view and, and from the traveller's point of view, um, you can ask questions at the gate so when you're boarding the plane you can yeah. ask the staff if your bag's uh -huh. loaded. So right now we are at arrivals and we had an amazing tour behind the scenes so now you probably get a little bit of idea what happens to your bag but yeah nice one. thank you so much for the tour and for the inside that was amazing. No absolute pleasure. Um, it's, it's just such a, a vast space made so small by, by the system itself so it's great. Thank you for joining us on this tour. And, um, Terminal 3 next for you, Josh. Exactly, there you go. So guys, thank you so much for watching and let me know in the comment section below what you think of the whole system, which is really incredible. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, you should subscribe, right? Absolutely, <laughs> get on board. Exactly. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you. Bye.